And I'm going to go ahead and start with Shekinah, T.I., and Tiny. That's where we're going to start it off today, okay? So I actually did see a Funky Dineva's video talking about this. Shout out to Q. Um, and Q is changing up his style over there on his channel. And as time goes on, you have got to pivot because this is a creative space. So you have to feel, you know, the creativity flowing. You have to feel like you want to talk about something. You have to be passionate about it in order to do it. So changing the conversation, I think, is ideal as you get, you know, uh, older and start doing this for longer because your mentality and your mindset is changing. I feel like I'm doing the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, maybe not to his level. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm still for this messy shit, bitch. Please cause still come down to me for the messy shit, okay? Um, but I really enjoyed his commentary, so that made me want to pick this up. And listen, I wanted to talk about this last night on the Ooh Ladies First panel. If y'all missed our episode of the Ooh Ladies First panel, go ahead and check that out, okay? It was a really good show. The Ooh Ladies First panel is usually a long show. We are trying to shorten it, okay? So the three and a half hours, child... It was a season opener. There was a lot going on. We had a lot to discuss. But, you know, we try to, you know, we're going to be trying to keep it, you know, two and a half at most as we move forward, you know, into our third season. But I wanted to talk about that. But because I didn't want us to be on there all night, I had to start taking things from our, you know what I'm saying? I had to start pulling things from the, you know, from the show. Um, Listen, I know a lot of y'all love the longer reviews okay i know y'all love that um oh yeah we're you know we're gonna be breaking stuff down into you know little little you know segments basically we're gonna start breaking our videos down to segments after the live comes out you know what i'm saying but either way you know we enjoy doing the long shows because we be having a lot to talk about but i didn't want to overload my girls we were all tired child i'm i'm recovering from undiagnosed covid as far as i'm concerned and it just it still has me tired as hell so at the end of the day girl we just could not be up there all night but i wanted to talk about shekinah because i actually did have notes from the live that i saw did i delete the notes by accident maybe i did child let me see if we can let me see if we can can we child we can't okay it don't matter it doesn't matter that i deleted it because i actually sent it to the girls in the email so let me go back to the email <laughs> okay listen i love when i'm still prepared don't worry about it girl okay just let y'all come on into the room because y'all know y'all be late um okay so shekinah shekinah cries on another live you guys about tiny and clifford OK, there were a few points that I'm going to pull out that I saw from the live and then we're going to discuss. OK, so she kind of says that T.I. Clifford has always been an asshole to her. This is no surprise to us. I think we all know that, you know, as my girl Roxanne. OK, shout out to it's right. You know, uh, it's rocks on YouTube because it used to be for it's rocks and now it's it's rocks, I believe. Child, anyway. Y'all going to follow Roxanne too, but Roxanne always says that uh, that T.I. is the intelligent adjacent. And I love when she says that because it's the perfect example for him. He sounds smart. He uses big words like, you know, for, you know, uh, what does he say all the time? Prestigious fortitude, like just using all kind of big ass words in order to make you. The public think that he's smart, but because a lot of people don't, you know, know a lot of these words and, you know, a lot of these public school systems in the South and in inner cities failed our young black youth. People are inclined these days to think that this man is intelligent in some form of a civil or social justice leader. When the truth of the matter is he's misogynistic, colorist problematic and you know there have been stories about him sticking things in places that people don't want things stuck okay um <laughs> stuck um if, if you will so i'm not even going to get into the whole you know allegations because listen sabrina peterson i believe was being messy and trying to use things that were absolutely damaging but it's too late to try to harm them now that the relationship has soured and I feel like Shekinah was doing the same thing. And I almost feel like she jumped on that bandwagon in order to hurt them because they're assholes. And I feel like people often like to make it seem like, oh, tiny, it's not tiny, it's Clifford. Listen, birds of a feather, birds of a feather. 
Tiny is a woman that has figured out how to be unassuming. She's small, she's petite, she's biracial, okay? She's giving you a lot of societies. I'm not a harm, you know what I'm saying? Cubes, all right? Society isn't always, you know, that scared of little bow-legged short girls, country, biracial girl. They're not, they not that scared of these girls, okay? But they need to be because these are the girls, I'm sorry, Tiny, no disrespect, but you really do seem like the type of person that will make a woman feel comfortable like you were cool. And then she would end up in a situation where she was being harmed or felt like someone was doing something to her. Um, you know, and you set it up. Oh, you know, they always talking about, you know, on some bullshit that Ty had set up. No, some bullshit that Tiny had set up, if you ask me. OK, I hope I'm being clear on how I feel like Tiny has started to come off to me. And it's not even through her own actions, more so it is the way people explain their experiences with her and T.I. And I feel like a lot of the times people take her out of that conversation because T.I. is the man. Clifford is the man. Clifford is the asshole in the situation. But the fact that she's there allowing a lot of these things to take place, taking part in a lot of these things, is giving she's just as problematic, if not more than he is, because she's a woman and she is okay with a lot of the disrespectful shit that goes down. Yes! Oh my God, you better say it. I didn't want to say it because I didn't want to equate the two things exactly because I feel like we're, we don't have enough evidence to say that. But that is exactly the vibe that it's giving. Ghislaine Maxwell, it's definitely giving that vibe to me. Um, and that's bothersome. But I also feel like, you know, we're coming into a day and age where people are going to stop allowing celebrity to put a wool over their eyes, okay? Put a hood over their eyes as far as who somebody really is versus who the, you know, who they want you to think they are with the person that they present to you, their representative, okay? And I feel like a lot of us have been seeing the representative of both of these people, but as time has gone on and with social media and them doing the grandstanding, more so T.I. than Tiny with the grandstanding, but it, it has become more clear to us that both of them have problematic personalities and have probably done, excuse my French, some fucked up shit to people. OK, and Shekinah is one of those people. OK, so let me go ahead and, and finish on with what she said. She said that they were on a first class flight and she was seated in first class with he and Tiny. He walks up to her on the plane and says very loudly amongst a lot of white people, okay, because we always have to remember how black people feel in the presence of a lot of white people. We are always kind of on our P's and Q's sometimes, especially if we're in first class. So when he stands up and says, how did the help get into first class? It was very embarrassing to her. It, it's actually abusive. If you think about somebody that has consistently let someone know that they should not be here, they don't belong here, they're not deserving of being in this space, I feel like it's abusive, especially if they're around all the time, okay? He also screamed on her in a club behind handing Tiny a cell phone as if she was trying to put Tiny on the phone with some man. Um, which sounds along the lines of the disrespectful things that we feel like T.I. will play a part in. You know, you can cheat with everybody. But as soon as you think that, you know, your wife's friend is trying to tell her to get with somebody else. Now you want to do all of this disrespectful shit. And I could absolutely see him dressing her down, talking to her bad whenever the mood, you know, Whenever the mood came along, whenever he felt like saying something disrespectful, whenever she said something that he didn't like or, you know, did something that he didn't like or was too loud, he would then go and be disrespectful to her in front of people to embarrass her. And Tiny is sitting right there allowing it. OK, um, she also said that she is paying lawyer fees right now because of the things that she said in conjunction with the Sabrina Peterson situation. So now she wants for him, T.I. to pay her lawyer's fees. OK, now that she's been going through this process with them. And she also said she spoke on back when Tiny tried to bully her into fighting Bernice Burgos because I guess Bernice and Tiny were cool at one point. And then Bernice started sleeping with T.I. and she was trying to sick Shekinah on her. And to me, if you pay attention to their relationship, you know, 
why are you friends with someone who is not in your same, like in your same caliber? Why are you friends with someone who is not on your same level? And it's one thing for somebody to start off not being on your same level and get to that point. But Shekinah is still a regular, degular, schmegular woman. She may be a celebrity that, you know, a hood celebrity, whatever you want to call it. But it's not the same thing as the A-list and the money that T.I. and Tiny and their friends, Latoya Luckett, you know, Toya Wright, you know, all of those, you know, Monica, all of those people. She's not in their same tax bracket. OK, she's not really in their same social circle, but she worked for Tiny, therefore became friends with Tiny, knew all of Tiny's dirt. Tiny keeps her close. She does Tiny's hair probably for free. And now she kind of wants to say they never paid her. But that probably was an unspoken agreement between y'all that they carry you along with them wherever they go. And you get to, you know, be a part of the lifestyle and be a part of the clique. By by association of tiny forming friendships with these people, but Shekinah has a very ignorant mentality herself. So if you have this ignorant mentality, you're not going to use where you are to get yourself to a better place. She cried about how good Candy and Todd were to her because they actually helped her. After her and Tiny fell out, she was trying to get her own reality show and they helped her. They filmed with her. Now, it seems as if it did not, you know, it didn't pick up, but she did get on Love and Hip Hop. And we were wondering why the hell was Shekinah on Love and Hip Hop? Well, that's because somebody liked Shekinah and wanted to help her out. Okay. Child, is that the real Melody Hope? I don't know if that's the real Melody Hope. Friends like Tiny exist in large numbers. Um, what do you mean by that? Friends like Tiny exist in large numbers. Like they're only your friend when it's a whole bunch of y'all, but in y'all actual personal relationship, it may not be all of that. Like, what do you mean by that? Um, but either way, I feel like that says a lot about Tiny, that you wanted to keep somebody around you who you felt was beneath you, probably because it made you feel better about yourself OK, when your man was out there making you feel like shit because, you know, his family was holding him back. OK, and it's just so funny. To, it's funny to me to watch T.I. disrespect Tiny publicly several times throughout the years. Her, you know, uh, catching cases for him, you know, taking, you know, uh, taking deals to get him out of jail time, like all kind of shit that has transpired that has shown this woman doing whatever to please this man, including allowing this man to disrespect her friend. But I think what we have to look at now is, Tiny, what kind of woman are you? Tiny, what kind of woman are you? Okay? So I want everybody, like, you know, Quentin said, pay attention to your friend group. Okay? Pay attention to your friends. Because if, if there are... If there is a lack of, um, I know, I know Melody has her picture up there. If there is a lack of balance in the friendship, and I say balance because we don't have to be on the same level necessarily financially, but if everybody is bringing something to the table and everybody feels that they are being honored, if everybody feels like they're being valued in their friendship, then it's a whole nother thing. But to me, this was a testament to the fact that Tiny needed a friend around that made her feel good about herself because this friend in her eyes and her husband's was less than her. And now that that friendship has run its course, OK, you didn't throw the girl to the wolves and say, fuck her. And now she's trying to do the same thing to you and trying to point out all the terrible things that, you know, that you were doing to her when at the end of the day, she kind of you stuck around for the treatment. You stuck around for your friend to allow her little weird looking ass husband to play with you in your face like that all the time to disrespect you in front of people. She allowed that and you allow for that to take place because you thought the fame and whatever you were getting from them was worth it. And I feel like now, now that she kind of is looking back and you really don't have anything to show for it. Like, and that's no disrespect to her. I'm sure she is, you know, she, she looked like she got a nice house. She looked like she doing well for herself, but that's not the same thing as what Toya Wright was able to do for herself. And yeah, you may not be the boy, you know, the rapper's ex-wife, 
but you should have been able to parlay your situation into upgrading your life for real, for real, and not needing to reach out to Candy and them for help. But that just goes to show you were so worried about them and being a part of what they had going on instead of trying to figure something out for yourself that you allow for your own bag to slip. Because now you're in a position where you're crying about the, the treatment when really you should be moving on and feeling like they're going to get what they get when they get it. And I'm just going to worry about my own growth and doing what I have to do. But she's very hurt and you can tell. But she needs to go to therapy and figure that out because it's obvious that you put yourself in that situation. It's obvious that you allow those people to play with you like that. You should have never been in a position where you allowing them to do this barter system shit with you. Barter system shit is cute. But at the end of the day, people pay for their celebrity stylists to go around with them all the time. Why should you be any different just because y'all friends? That's because you wanted to be exclusively her hairstylist instead of being her hairstylist when she wanted to pay you. And then when she wanted to go and pay somebody else, you get you some other celebrity clients. You had other celebrity clients. I don't know what you were doing, Shekinah. Maybe you was too busy worrying about Gucci stores and shit. I don't know. I don't know. But I feel like your priorities been fucked up. And you need to get that together. So, yeah, there's some blame to put on T.I. and Tiny for sure for being fucked up individuals, bad friends to you while using you and trying to make you feel like you should be grateful for the bad treatment just because you got to get into some clubs and go to some parties that it, at this point is of no real value to you. The show, yeah. All of that, yeah, Tiny did do you solids, and you did not do what you were supposed to do, in my opinion, to get yourself to a place where you didn't really need them, okay? She has an edge control line. Good for her. But let me just be clear. That's why I said I know that she's doing well to some extent. But the fact that you're still online crying about these people lets us know that you feel like you're not where you're supposed to be. And that's just that on that. But yeah, yeah, y'all, y'all, you know, extend some hands of prayer for, for, for Shekinah. Because, you know, I want the girls to do well. You know, I don't want the girls to be out here upset. 